ik wil het nog een beetje laag houden. So what makes mud so, so fascinating? So mud or sediment, soft sediment from a water or an aquatic system can be infused and enriched in all sorts of microorganisms doing all sorts of different kinds of metabolism, very diverse metabolism. And what you'll see do this correctly is when I take up the mud it looks homogenous so it looks well mixed and what I'm going to do is I want to put it in a in an environment where I can enrich for certain kinds of organisms so in my case what I'm interested in is photosynthetic organisms so I'm going to use this mud and put it in a container in the light now another scientist might want to enrich let's say for a uh, a sulfur loving organism or an arsenic loving organism and they'll wow, it's really hot <laughs> they'll take this mud and put it into a container that has a lot of that compound and the idea is that you want to hedge your bet towards that organism so the reason i'm interested in mud it's kind of a um, a wealth of potential and you're doing that in your lab you're well, taking well, it to your lab, and then so I'll take this mud. Actually, no, I'm gonna actually make. I'll make the enrichment here. Uh -huh. So we'll take the mud. This is just a simple glass jar. What I've done is added some paper, and you see some salts in the bottom of the jar. That's a little bit of magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt, and calcium carbonate, or sodium carbonate, some baking soda. Again, these are just compounds to give the different microorganisms a little bit of a jolt. The, the, the paper serves as some carbon, but you could use leaves. We're just going to release the pressure. And it's hot mud. It's very warm. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably about 40 or so degrees. Okay. And so all I want to do, again, the point is to enrich for the microorganisms I'm interested in. I'm going to shake it up a little bit, dissolve that salt. And then all I'm going to do now is just get a little bit more of the water. So if I want to, I want to take an environmental sample, bring it back to the laboratory, but try to keep it as, as um, related or relevant as possible. So I'm going to add water from the overlying area and fill it up. So you're taking sort of its, its habitat? Taking a little bit of its habitat to go. Okay. It's kind of the, the fast food version of, of science. Often the simplest, it's like Occam's razor, the simplest way to approach a problem will give you the simplest answer, which should lend itself to a simple interpretation. In this particular experiment, so this is called a Winogradsky column or Winogradsky enrichment. In, the, in this experiment, I'm going, to, I'm going to put it in a windowsill. So I want to have natural light again to mimic. Maybe it will be a bit different than the irradiance that hits this, than the light here, but it, to mimic the day length because this will be very close by to where, where we are here at Mono Lake, but also to give it a night-day cycle. So again, these simple things that that if you want to focus on a particular microorganism. In other experiments, I may keep it in complete darkness. And unlike here that it's open, and we have an exchange of oxygen with the atmosphere, but this mud, I can assure you, is anoxic, has no oxygen in it from, from the smell. So because I have it open, um, we'll look at an example. We can look at another example. You'll see that we have the variety of organisms will position themselves at exactly the right place the perfect nutrient concentration and the perfect oxygen tension. And that happens anywhere. So we can take mud from this environment. We could take mud from, um, from Laguna Verde in South America. We could take mud from uh, lakes in, in, in the Russia. You're a sort of mud junk. You could take mud from almost anywhere. What's amazing is you'll get almost exactly the same 
types of microbial metabolism in the same general setup, almost like a geologic formation. And what does it learn? Actually, what I think is most exciting, there's two, two, twofold interests. Number one, I'm interested in cyanobacteria. So in this particular case, I'm going to look for what grows right at the top, can go anoxic or oxic. But number two, when we close this and the microorganisms begin to do their job, basically what you're going to see, or what, you'll, what you'd find, is what I think of as a recapitulation of Earth history, of our history. At the bottom, first it'll turn black. And that's from iron reacting with sulfides. You get these, these black mud. It'll go from a gray to a black. The compound that those microorganisms, and it's absolutely driven by microbes, diffuses up, and then in, you'll get a red band. And then what those microorganisms influence is another band, the cyanobacteria. So if you think about it, you're stepping back through Earth history. Now, what happens before that black layer, we don't understand in geologic terms. But I always wonder if there's mud out there and a Winogradsky column to make that might have something a step before that we don't know. Before time, before life. Potentially telling us something about where we go from the abiotic to these biotic processes driving everything we see today.